Hi, I'm Nadine Rajavi, the executive producer of Below Deck Mediterranean and the new franchise coming out, Below Deck Down Under. Although I'll never forget my roots, where I started, the original Below Deck. And I'm here with our captains. Hello. Hey, Captain Lee. <laughs> nice and warm greeting. I'm trying to figure out why the link that I had uh, in my email didn't work and the link that just got sent to me 30 seconds ago did work and it's the same link. Let's start off. Um, what do you guys know about each other, uh, know of each other? This is the first time I think that we've had all three of you in a room together. Yay. Uh, it's fascinating. <laughs> I did a couple Instagram lives with uh, Sandy. And so, and she held my hand through those, which was really helpful. And I really appreciate that. And when I first got involved, I reached out to Captain Lee and we kind of emailed back and forth. Um, but that's it. We've never met in person yet. Yeah. Um, when I was uh, in Croatia, I, you know, saw the boat, but because of quarantine, I couldn't meet Captain Glenn. And I was like, oh my God, I just want to meet him. But again, I know you're Canadian, you're from Canada. Yep. Um, you, you've been in the sailing world for a long time and the charter world, which is really cool. Uh, I love your vibe. You're so chill. And Captain Lee, I've known for many, many years because we were docked at the same marina at Hall of Fame Marina 20 years ago. Wow. Really? So you guys go way back. It was, uh, you know, I was on, Sandy was on like 67, 70 footers. And at that point in time, that was still a pretty big boat. No, it's not like that anymore. It's a whole different boat yeah. now. It's gotten much, yeah. much bigger, the industry. So Glenn, I mean, speaking of that, we're, we're you know talking about all those things. It's like going into Below Deck. Did you ever watch Below Deck before joining? And has your life changed since? <laughs> well, I had seen bits and pieces. I, ha you know, living in Europe, I don't get to watch a lot of American television, you know, broadcast television. Uh, so I hadn't really seen that much. Um, but since, you know, my life really hasn't changed that much. Uh, I was just saying to Sandy, I haven't really been recognized that many times because I am pretty much exclusively live in Europe and especially recently have been had a chance to go to North America. So I've only been recognized, you know, where I've seen them and they, Hey, it's you. Can I get a selfie? Maybe five, six times. I, I want to, I want people to recognize me in airports, but I, it hasn't happened yet. Well, well, listen, you, you talk to uh, Lee and Sandy and they can't go anywhere without getting stopped. And they're, they're like beetles. They get their shirts ripped off. Like I saw them at Bravo <laughs> and it was like, I've never seen anything like this. I was like, oh my God. It was like, you'd think that they saw Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet I bet they're probably over it by now, but I haven't had that experience. So I, I think it would be really cool. But, you know, maybe the novelty wears off after a while. But I, I would love to interact more with fans face to face, you know. Be careful what you ask for, Glenn. <laughs> I had a feeling he was going to say that. The way that I view it is, is, you know, if you can put a smile on somebody's face for 10 or 15 seconds of your time, why would you not do that? I totally agree. There's totally not enough people in this world that do that sort of thing. Yeah. It doesn't take exactly. anything to be nice to somebody. Yeah. And yeah. all they're doing is paying you a compliment. So while sailing and, you know, and, and, and captaining any yacht, like, you know, yacht are different, it's always guaranteed to be glamorous. What is it like running these mega million dollar vessels around the world? Like, you know, I think that people don't realize it's like, you know, the guests on a motor yacht are there. It's a floating hotel. And I think that while you can get that experience on a sailing yacht, it's like it's more sport. I think that that's, you know, I think that that's something that's interesting that, you know, that people don't realize that, you know, it, it is very it, it, it's sport, it's adventure. I personally, I really love to sail. Sailing to me stops being fun when you have to go somewhere on a schedule and you've got to yes. go from point A to point B. Good, good point. Good point. But, yes, exactly, Glenn. So to me, sailing is really fun when you get out there and you take a sailboat out and you go like, okay, which way is the wind blowing? Yeah. And you figure that out and then you go, okay, that's the way we're going. Yeah. And we're just going to go sailing just for the pure pleasure of sailing, because yeah. it really is. I mean, sailing is just remarkable. It truly is. Like I say, it's, until you have to go somewhere, you have to keep a schedule. Yeah. Then it's a lot of work. 
I, I think the guest expectations are different when they charter a sailboat versus a charter yacht. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they know what they want. Yeah. yeah. And people that charter a really big sailboat, uh, they want some amenities, but they also want to get out there and they want to, they want to see some sheets in the wind. We're going to go into the biggest crash in blow deck history, Glenn. I, I know that this was a really tough one and it was a tough one for me to watch. You know, that must have been really, really tough. And, you know, after seeing the episode, Glenn, how do you feel about the situation months later? You know, obviously a first of its kind for you but, and obviously watching all of it kind of happen in real time. Uh, no comment. Don't want to talk about it. No, just kidding. I can't believe this. We're going to toss you under the bus immediately. I know. It was wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. What's going on? Slow down, slow down, slow down. Ahead, 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 ahead. He's going ahead, but I'm lost. Ahead, 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 ahead. Fuck me, God damn it! Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of the low point in my career, and it's caught on camera. So it's it's not fun, but you know, um, things happen. You know, I'm sure uh, Sandy and Lee have had. You know, different crazy things happen and things happen on boats. They don't always run. You know, I saw an episode where Sandy lost his throttles going into the port, I think, in Spain. Uh, you know, these things do happen. Unfortunately, for me, it happened at the absolute worst time. I was already going astern, tried to go forward. Nothing happened. I know now what the problem was. It got stuck in the stern um, and, and, and it hit the dock. I was, you know... I'm just glad no one got hurt because you can always fix a boat, you know, as it happens. And as you see me react, I have no idea how bad it is. I'm 35 meters away and I just felt something I've never felt before. And it, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. You can see I'm going to get a little bit emotional. Um, but uh, in the end, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's mostly cosmetic. We got very lucky where we impacted, there were some really big stones on the dock and we hit them perfectly so that they rode up the back and dissipated all the energy. And had it, not, had it been solid concrete or, or solid stone or something with no joint, uh, I think it may have ended our season for sure. It wasn't fun, as you can imagine, it's not fun. Lee and Sandy, yeah. how did you feel watching that? My first thought was, if you would have had a fast thinking crew member, he could have flipped a fender back there. Like I can't tell you how many times I've been saved by fenders. That was my first thought too. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't think with the momentum we had, I don't think a, a fender would have survived it. Yeah. Um, we have the fenders positioned alongside where, you know, where we're going, if we're going in between boats. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the crew did a great job mm -hmm. and there was not, you know, we're all just kind of passengers at that point. The boat's just doing its own thing. And luckily, you know, like I said, no one got hurt. Thank God. Yeah. I looked at it and I just like, you know, unless you're there and you're living it in real time. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to second guess anything that you did or anybody else did because I wasn't there. It wasn't real time for me. And I don't know what you had to deal with. You did everything you could possibly do. Yeah. In my estimation. So. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. No. Hey, um, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying like you didn't do your job. Like, uh, you know. No, like, I know that. As long as no one was hurt, everything happens for a reason, right? <laughs> exactly. 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 And I wasn't trying to create drama. And, you know, I've docked right. that boat a hundred <laughs> times in, in more difficult situations. I was talking to a friend of mine, actually Byron from the first season, and he was working on a similar boat. And he said, yeah, they are kind of notorious for if you're in the high rev maneuver curve, when we shift, we're not changing the, the direction of the shaft. It's just the, the blades, the pitch of the blades. And when they're pitched all the way back in high revs, they get stuck. And that's what it was. I didn't know. I wasn't aware that they had this issue, uh, but it makes perfect sense because even after we touched, I was full ahead and the boat wasn't moving off the dock. It was still stuck on the dock. In layman's terms, it's basically like when you're reversing a car almost, when you try to like go from reverse to drive without the neutral, it's kind of like that, right? Where your car kind of gets stuck. Is that a little bit like that? It's kind of like that, but imagine that you're going in reverse, you're getting close to your garage door and you think, uh, you know, the brakes aren't working. I want to go forward. You put it in first, but the gear gets, it's still stuck in reverse and you hit the gas to go forward and it just keeps going back. So right. it's kind of, it's right. a bit complicated.
hard to explain, but yeah, these guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing with this, you know, with with yachting. I think in in the series is it's so real and it's so you're beholden to Mother Nature. You're holden to engine problems. You're beholden to the equipment you're given or your crew, you know, or like you know when when somebody's docking a boat, it's like her, you know, eyes and ears are 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 you know, it's the bosun, you know. So you talk about that a little bit. I remember that one season you had a very green deck crew um, and there was a small crash. Um, and, and you know, that's that's tough because those are things that are out of your hands. Yeah, well, they, they had, you know, radioed up that all the lines were off. Yeah. When they weren't, I still had a spring line attached. But I couldn't see it from the wing station. Yeah. And so I'm backing on. I'm trying to figure out why am I not coming off the dock? And I just went. Yeah. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. I should be coming off the dock and I'm not going anywhere. And then it starts going back towards the dock. And uh, then somebody came on the radio and said, oh, we still have a spring line attached. And I thought, well, that's really nice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You know, that's why I let them drive the boat off the dock. It is, a, it's, you know, two parts for me. It's like to give them that feeling of, wow, I can be a captain. Um, and yeah. also the importance of communication and line handling. And so that that responsibility, they get to feel it for a, a few minutes, you know, and that's why I put them at the helm to dock. That's a good, that's a very good point. Very good point. Now let's talk about the guests and the clientele. Now let's talk about how they are different from sailing to motor yachts. You know, I don't, I don't see a lot of difference between the guests between a sailing yacht and a char and uh, a motor yacht. I really don't. I, I watch Glenn's show and, uh, you know, he seems to get dealt the same cards that I get dealt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. But I think they're on sailboat. I, I mean, I have, I've been only on sailboats for 20 years. Uh, my first boat was a motor yacht for, I think I did nine months back in 2000. I always have this impression. You know, we talk about you guys like the dark side. We say, you know, because people who work on sailboats, if they go over to motor yachts, we say, oh, they've gone over to the dark side. Uh, <laughs> but I find, I, I just feel that it's a little harder for those guys that the people have a little higher expectation and they cut us a little bit of slack and they're a little less formal when they come on. That's the only thing. But I agree with Lee. It's not, I mean, it's not a big difference, but I don't know. I, I just think they're a little more chilled. And I think... They expect that. to get a little closer to the crew because when we're sailing, you know, there we have a few of the crew involved and a lot of the guests involved, and it's a little close, a little bit less separation between the crew and the and the and the guests. That's the only thing I I think about it. You know, I have a lot of friends that are sailors, and it is definitely about the adventure. It is about I want to have a real feeling of sailing. I want to connect with the water because you're really close with the water. You feel the wind. You have a totally different experience than stepping on a motor yacht where it's like, turn up the volume, you know, and um, a very formal white glove silver service. Not saying they don't do that on sailing yachts, but I mean, it's a very different men mentality. You know, I mean, it's a venture to go on any yacht and any super yacht. But yeah, something about the way the boat heels over and it's moving and they're changing direction and, you know, back and changing tack and jibe and you know, they're seeing a lot of stuff. I let them take the helm, you know. I, I think it's, I think adventure is a big part of it. Let's move on to the crew. How do you all handle the nonstop hookups with your crew? Like, are there any ground rules that you lay down with your crew? I mean, you can't prevent people from hooking up, obviously. We're all human beings and, and you know, have, <laughs> how do you, how do you handle the, this as captains and as, you know, masters of the vessel dealing with, with your crew? I don't know. I think if you come down too hard on them, they're just, it's just going to go underground. They're just going to hide it from you, you know? So it's, I think nature's going to take its course. Um, my philosophy, as long as they're doing their job correctly, I'm going to cut them a little bit of slack, especially when they couldn't get off the boat this past season, you know, it, you know, maybe they pushed it to the edge, but um, I don't know. It's not my place, I think, to dictate how people spend their, leisure time when they're not working when they're not on the clock uh within certain limits i agree with you i feel the same way as long as it doesn't come up on deck and it stays below deck i don't care if they all hook up and they have an orgy below i don't care as long as they do their job above deck 
as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's something that you're never going to prevent. You can sit there and make rules till hell freezes over. The people are going to do what they're going to do and they're going to find a way to do it. So you try to control it. You try to, uh, try to keep it not in check, but you try to keep it to the point where it's not going to affect the performance of the rest of the crew yeah. and how the boat operates and functions. Yeah. Once exactly. it moves over into that area, then you've crossed the line and then you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. Yeah. You know, guess what? When people are sleeping together, their attitude towards one another changes. Yeah. They may not see it, but you sure as hell see it. You're like, you're going to pick up on it for sure. <laughs> they exactly. get sweeter, don't they? They start opening yeah. the door. For <laughs> oh, yeah. They Either serve them their exactly. drink. Next thing you know, they're Either serving they're their, their plate or cleaning it. Right? Body language. They can go the opposite direction just as quickly as they can go in the sweet direction. Yeah. Yeah. When That's things true. go, can go sour. sour. And yeah, then it's like, sour. now you've got an issue because now it's disruptive to the crew. Yeah. Because these two people, where they were hopping in the rack, now can't stand the sight of each other. Yeah. Yeah. Now you've got that to do. That's deal. the danger. That is the yeah. danger. If they're a couple when they come on board, that's yeah. one. Yeah. But if they become a couple while on board, that usually lasts about till the end of the charter season. If it's <laughs> not and then when it goes south during the charter season, everybody else on the boat has to pay for it. You know, going into becoming a couple on board, I mean, it's cool to see people move into the next phase of their lives. You know, how do you feel about that? We've got our first, um, you know, pregnancy coming. Uh, Danny, Danny's pregnant, and and is it nice to see people kind of coming on board, going into the next phase, into their lives, and things like that? Well, yeah, I do. I think I'm. I feel you know I'm really happy for Danny. I mean, I love Danny. She's fantastic. Uh, and I guess being being a mother was a very important thing for her. I don't know if the circumstances are ideal, uh, but she seems to be very happy. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's unusual. That's not something you see. I, these guys can tell you. It's not something that happens that often. Uh, but it's I think it's interesting and good for her. I'm, I'm really happy for her. I have a question. What is the craziest spot that you've ever had somebody hook up on the boat? We actually I got had one. somebody hook up on in the bosun's locker. That nasty oh, yeah. smelly oh, I, locker with oh, all the yeah. 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 <laughs> I uh, I used to work on uh, uh, a boat called uh, maybe I should name the boat, but it was the biggest sloop in the world. You know, seventy five meter sloop with a ninety meter rig, and uh, I think it was a deckhand brought a lady back to the boat. She wasn't crew. And, you know, they couldn't go into a cabin, but they wanted to have some time by themselves. So they both climbed up into the boom and the boom is gigantic on this boat. And they went up in the boom and did whatever they did. And then when it was time for them to get down, she couldn't get down. So he had to go inside and wake up a couple of extra deck crew to get a harness, get her in a harness and get her down. I mean, it's, it's a big boat, a big rig. So I remember that one. Yeah. Crazy. That's funny. You know, talk about a talk about a walk of shame, a climb down of shame. You know. <laughs> what about you, Sandy? Where, where's the craziest place I, that people? I you know I don't know honestly. I I think the boom story is probably the best <laughs> one. Uh, you know I, I don't want to know to be honest. Like who knows? And with that stuff, listen, like people break up. It's sad. I mean, um, ta you know, Pageant Sierra broke up. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, that was that was what I, I actually wasn't uh, expecting. Yeah, I talked to Pageant a couple of weeks ago and, you know, I don't know if they're going to get back together. It doesn't seem like it. It's very sad because they were a rock solid couple. But, you know, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, they were together for quite a number of years, too. And I love them. They're very close friends of mine. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think they still stay in contact because, you know, they spend so much time together, but maybe they just figured out it wasn't right and they didn't want to, you know, they just wanted to move on and I, you have to respect that, you know, it's, uh, but, uh, I love them both, you know, I look forward to seeing them again soon. Um, let's talk about your most memorable guests, Lee. <laughs> I think one of my most memorable was uh, Timothy Sykes because oh, yep. 
He was just such a douche. Could be better with the internet. Is there anything we can do? You know, it's frustrating when we're trying to make trades and it's like, I understand. You know, whatever you can do. And that's nothing I haven't said to his face. One of the most fun guests that I've had uh, in charters, Leanne Tui was just a great charter. Her and her husband, Shawnee, from uh, Blindside. They were just, they were just great. And then uh, the housewives from Atlanta, when they were on board, they were just a lot of fun. And I, I went, I went into that one thinking that, oh, Christ, they're going to be such high maintenance, and they're going to be over the top, and it's just going to go on and on, and it's going to be the charter from hell. Couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah, they were just a lot of fun. Sandy, how about you? Well, for the ones that were really terrible to the crew of the Atlanta charter those ladies um where it yep. was like her food she compared it to dog food sorry my dog eats food like this i don't this should be seven star syrup this is ridiculous yeah i could actually make this that was pretty horrible so they weren't very kind and i think my most i have to say jennifer berman because i've never been offered a, a vibrator so the womanizer you know it's kind of like here's a gift <laughs> You know, so I, you know, honestly, I think about that and I just laugh because, you know, that's so bold and yeah. Yeah. And I just thought that was kind of like awkward for me, but also very funny because she takes it very seriously because yeah. she is a doctor. Very, of women's, <laughs> yes. Right. She's a doctor. Oh, of okay. sexual health, yeah, right. So you, you can't joke about it. Um, yeah. I like Johnny Damon's charter also was very lively and fun. Glenn, have how about you, your most memorable guests? Well, one charter that comes to mind is this season we had um, Barry and, and Tony, uh, very interesting family uh, where the uh, primary is um, proposing to his daughter's ex-boyfriend. I want to ask you to marry me. Yes, of course I want to be a part of this. <gasps> I don't know. It was very interesting for me, the whole dynamic of that family. Um, but I think the, 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 I don't know, the toughest one would probably be the um, first season where we had all the guys on board and they were, they were kind of, it was like a testosterone fest, you know, and they were out, trying to outdo each other. They, those guys kind of reminded me my, of my buddies when, when I was growing up. I had some crazy buddies, but they were a lot of work for the crew. And it was, I think that was probably the most challenging. You know, they went out to nightclubs and came back with, you know, um, some girls and stuff. And it, it was getting a bit crazy. So that was probably the toughest one. But, you know, I want to add also, because I forgot there's so many charters. Mr. Skin. Oh, my God, the naked news. That was pretty crazy. That's right. Season two, I for <laughs> Mr. Skin. <laughs> yeah, no, I forgot about that one. So I think that would be my over the Jen Berman one because that was, you forget, there's so many charters. You're like, oh my God. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Uh, anchors were tangled up literally like a rat's nest while we had naked yeah. people on the yacht filming a news <laughs> show. <laughs> Drifting, by the way. Thankfully out to sea and not towards shore. shore. <laughs> Um, now let's go on to production on board. Um, listen, we're breaking the fourth wall a little bit here, so that, that's okay. But um, what's it like having a film crew on board? And, you know, how does that differ from, you know, running a, a, a charter yacht? Because it's stressful enough running a boat and then having you being filmed while running a boat. How, what's that like? I don't, I don't do anything any different. It's, yeah, I agree. I, I run the boat the same way. I've been running a boat for 25, 30 years. Yeah. And the only difference is somebody's filming it. And as exactly. long as they stay out of the way, I'm fine with it. I don't yep. care. You know, I think for me, uh, the first time it was a little weird because the cameras are in your face. And um, for a woman at the helm, I'm not a guy, so it's harder to get to that bridge. It's not... Yeah. you know, typical to have a woman there. And it's like, wow, this is pretty wild. Um, also, the pressure that I felt for my first season um, to do a good job, because I think I psychologically, I did that to myself, was tenfold because of the cameras. 
for me, the hard part's the fourth wall because in the yacht world, we're, we're people people. We're used to like yeah, taking care of people, right? So you got this film crew and you see how hard they carry these 75, these cameras are insanely heavy and they're walking up and down the stairs and the stairs are so steep and the, the mic boxes they have on them. And I just want to take care of them. I want to serve them food. I want to make sure they're hydrated. And, you know, um, and you guys, you know, even you, Nadine, like you guys are in that room. It's so cramped. You've got all those screens. Um, you're dealing with our emotions, our tempers, our everything that's going on. So I think about the entire vessel being the crew. I don't look at production and our crew. To me, we're one crew. And that is hard for me to keep that fourth wall and not break it which is so important uh, because I'm that charter captain. I'm used to taking care of people. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, I think like Sandy said, the, the fourth wall is the, the, the strangest part of it because it's weird to see people every day and not interact. It's sort of they're like flies on the wall. You know, you, we don't say good morning and that's really strange. You know, I mean, sometimes I would sneak a good morning to the person who's miking me up because I'm just getting started. <laughs> But after that, I come out of the cabin and I, you know, I'm meant to ignore them. That's why we have surveillance cameras. But, you know, I think the fourth wall is so important. It's also to keep the integrity of the show, but also not to get in your guys' way as you guys are running a boat. And that's what's so important is to, to, to make sure that you can do your job running a boat. What I see when people compare captains, it's like not all captains are built the same. Everybody has a different style. Everybody's different. And is that a hard thing when you, when you see these things online, you know? Yeah, I think I, I like that question because I think you're, we're career captains and I was, yeah. a, you know, a very busy charter captain in the med. I'm glad I'm in the med because that's my territory. You know, that's what I did for 20 years in the med. And my career was a very different career path. And Glenn's, Glenn's on sailing yachts, but also in the med, but also other parts of the world. And I think everybody has their own unique thing to offer, which is so cool. And I think it's great for the viewers because you have three different characters. And Glenn, you're so Canadian. <laughs> you're so chill. You are so Canadian. I had Canadian crew. You are the epitome of a Canadian. Which is awesome, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'll totally. Well, I'm proud. I'm proud to be Canadian, so I, yeah. I'll take that as a compliment. Yes, I'm a little more casual than you guys, but I get away with it. So I, you know, it's worked so far. So I keep doing it, and I can only be the way I am. You know, I can't be Captain Lee. I can't be Captain Sandy. I'm just Captain Glenn, and and if it works, it works. You know, if it doesn't work, I'll go. I'll go drive a truck or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I don't think working. we'll see you driving a truck anytime soon, Glenn. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, with that, I know we've got the fourth wall and things like that, but, you know, do you build a bond and friendship with the production crew as filming happens? I know that we're supposed to build this fourth wall. You know, does it become a family for you, you know, with production? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, especially when you have the same film crew. Yeah. yeah, and you're exactly like uh, the people that I met season one and season two, and but it's such a great group of people, and we're all you know we're all trying to do the same thing to to share this crazy super yacht life for the you know for the crew and guests what it's all about because I think um, I think a lot of people are interested in it. I guess it's that dynamic of you know it's sort of like Downton Abbey on a boat you know and it's that upstairs downstairs kind of thing and uh, and I love to share it with people who. Maybe, you know, at, at home, they like wonder how that works. And so now they can tune in and, and see what life is like on a super yacht, you know? So I know I'm, I'm proud to be part of that. Uh, Lee, Sandy? Oh, yeah, to me, you know that. I mean, we're like sisters. I, uh, I connect with them. I, I feel that way. And especially when you have the, the same production team coming back. And I don't know, for me, I love people. So Wherever I go in the world, I just love connecting. And I think production for me, it's a fascinating world because our lives are so parallel because it's logistics. It is all logistics. And at the same time, smoke and mirrors, we're all happy. You know, we got to like walk out and 
you know, put the smile on because the minute we walk yeah. upstairs, it could be World War Three downstairs. We walk upstairs. We're like, hi, what can I get you? How's your charter? But it's <laughs> like we hug at the end of it and we made it. And I love that feeling. We succeeded through COVID. That's incredible. Yeah. Like we uh, made I'm amazed. It. I'm amazed that production pulled that off, you know, last season. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty ballsy. It's pretty, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed by it. Yeah. Lee, you've done nine seasons. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot. You've built a, a, a basically a, a, you know, a family after nine seasons of, of the series. Yeah. It's uh, nine years. It's, uh, it's pretty remarkable. I remember season yeah. one <laughs> where we weren't sure what we were doing. <laughs> Nobody was. Yeah. And we had, we had a ton of people. And I remember when I first pulled into the dock, I, w I was looking at the uh, these 40 or 50 people that were all standing around waiting for us to get tied up so they could like converge on the boat like ants. And I'm just looking at these people and they're just like, I mean, I see tattoos and body piercings and, and all sorts of dress. And, and then after, after day one, I just realized that these were just the hardest working, dedicated individuals yeah. I'd ever been exposed to. And I really took on a whole new appreciation for production and for, yeah. you know, the lifestyle that they lead. Yeah. They're separated from their families as well. Yeah. They're going through the same hardships that, that we all go through on, on yachts. It's not all that different. And we're all busting our ass for the same thing. It just, you know, you feel good together. And that means a lot. Yeah, I agree. If, totally. If it, if it doesn't mean that to you, then you're probably in the wrong business. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for the amazing conversation. This was a, a, an honor and a privilege for me to be able to like do this. I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful and, and like, Thank you for your time. This is so incredible. And um, check out Captain Glenn and Below Deck Sailing Yacht. Final episodes airing now, Monday nights. Um, any teasers about how the season will end, Glenn? I think it's it's got a very interesting ending. I can't go into too much detail. Uh, it's a bit unusual, but I think it ends on a real high note. <sighs> That's good. That's really good. I Unusual, but it ends on a high note. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's positive. It's not negative. It's, uh, but it's unusual. It's a bit strange, but it's it's good. We, I, you know, it was a great way to cap off a very, uh, very exciting and and fun season. That's that's a great tease, Glenn. <laughs> was it? I'm, I'm I'm terrible at teases. I don't know what. No, you, that's, you nailed it. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> you really did nail it. You really did nail it. And Below Deck Mediterranean season six premieres June 28th. Um, and uh, Sandy, what can fans expect from you this season? Completely different season. I think the, I think the viewers will really like what we have. Um, a great crew, diverse crew, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. So for me, it was such a wonderful experience. It, it was actually amazing. And Below Deck Season 9 with Captain Lee is coming this fall. Lee, I know that you just got back. Um, so I know that that's going to be really exciting and a lot to come. So I don't know if there's anything you could tease or even talk about. Not really. It's uh, It was challenging. But, uh, yeah, there's there's you know, we had some unusual guests this year, which I thought was rather unique. Uh had some unusual crew as well, which probably <laughs> wasn't so unique. So, great combination of both. Never a dull moment. Certainly wasn't. Thank you so much to the three amazing captains, captains of my life. <laughs> Please check out Below Deck on Bravo. And I really, really appreciate your time and all of us coming together. And I couldn't thank you guys enough for everything. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It was great it was seeing pleasure you Pleasure to talk to three of you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Nadine. Bye. See you, See you later.